Okay, uh, we have two dogs, two Cocker Spaniels, that don't live here all the time. They live here inconsistently, and uh, they're, they're all male dogs in the house, and we have a couple areas in the house that are being marked on. Now, when dogs are marking things, they're doing it out of a perception of authority or leadership. This is my couch, this is my table, or I'm asserting myself, I want everybody else to know this is mine. So what I suggested is, uh, or I'm sort of talking about some rules. One of the rules I like to incorporate is no furniture. Now right now, Scout, the Yellow Lab, is not allowed in the furniture, but the Cockers are. Um, but the Cockers don't just sit on the, on, the t on the couch, they sit on the back of the couch, which has more status. And the higher dog sits, the more rank they have. So by letting the dogs sit higher than the humans, the dogs think that they have dominion over the humans. So I would suggest no furniture for 30 days for any of the dogs. At the end of 30 days, or as long as they're marking, no furniture. And it, once that's the case, then if, what's this dog's name again? Talbot. If after 30 days they stop marking and I want to invite Talbot up, I make the decision. So if Talbot comes and sits right here and looks at the couch, his, his way of saying, I want on the couch, let me up. Or really more effectively saying, uh, if anyone has any objections to me getting on the couch, say something now, otherwise I'm getting up. So they usually pause and then they just jump right up. So when he gets up without, you know, when he pauses, you would disagree if you see it. M much more effective. If he jumps up anyways, then I stand up and I say, off. But say it with a little bite in your, and then if he doesn't, I put my hand behind their butt and push them firmly to the edge so they feel like they're going to fall off and they jump off on their own. After 30 days or after they stop marking, then we let them up with an invitation per incident and only for good behavior. So the dog gets up here and starts barking. Well, now you have to immediately get down. You, your window is three seconds. If it's longer than three seconds after that you correct or reward a dog, they can't understand what it is that you're connecting. Mm -hmm. So right, right away, make sure the dog gets off. If the dog is up here and behaving well and then gets down to go to drink water, when it comes back, it would need invitation to get back up. This way, the humans are in charge of this. Think of your furniture as the VIP section of the club, and you guys are the VIPs. <laughs> you can always go to the dog's level, lay on the floor with the pillow, and watch TV, and hug them, and play with them. They just can't come up to your level. It would be more powerful if you make this without the uh, sleeping in the bed as well because that's a more prestigious position. Some people can't make that, so they just do this. And that's okay, just not as effective. Other rules is I ask the dog to sit before I open a door and let it out. If it doesn't sit the first time, I walk away, wait one minute, and then I go back and I offer it again one opportunity to sit. If it, do if it doesn't, I walk away for two minutes, next time for four minutes, next time for eight minutes. But I'm only giving the dog one opportunity to do it, and then I walk away. If I stand there, the dog knows I'm waiting on it. So come down, watch your TV, you know, pull out your phone, return some emails, and then go back at, at regular intervals. Um, when you tell the dog to sit or come and the dog walks away, most people are like, no big deal, we just go back to what we're doing. That tells the dog that listening to the human is optional because the human's not following through. So if you tell Scout to sit and he walk, gets up and walks away, get up and follow him. Don't do it angrily, don't yell, not quickly, just methodically like a mummy or a zombie. If he goes around the kitchen table, move the chairs behind so he can't keep on going in a loop. When he goes into a bedroom, close the door behind you. Eventually, he's going to find himself cornered where he has nowhere else to go. We don't do this angrily, but at that point, I say, sit! And when the dog sits, then I turn and walk away. I don't reward at that point because I had to make it happen. But the dog needs to, all the dogs need to understand it. That's what I mean about scent marking. Oh, um, rubbing. So, um... All the dogs need to understand that from now on when the humans tell us to do something, either we do it now or we do it later. And if we do it later, we're not going to be able to do anything in between because the humans are going to be following through. If we don't follow through, we're not saying that we, we're saying we're not that serious about it. And again, it helps reinforce that we don't have to listen to the humans. Now, a lot of people think, I don't, David, you don't understand how busy I am. I got to do this, this, this. I don't have time to chase my dogs around every time I ask them to do something. Make a commitment for two weeks. If you do it every single time for two weeks, they will adapt and they're like, from now on, they tell us to do something, I better do it right away. And then I can go back to doing what I was doing. So think about it as a two week commitment and you're gonna notice a big improvement for your dogs. Another rule, dogs should not be allowed within seven feet of anyone's eating food. It's very rude. They should not be allowed within seven feet of each other when they're eating food. And we're gonna go through a structured feeding thing at the end of the session. But by incorporating rules and structure this way, we can help the dogs identify more as a follower the more they're a follower, the less these two are going to mark. The more he, Scout, considers himself a follower, the less trepidation and nervousness and anxiety he's going to feel because he just can go back to being a dog. So that's the importance and the reason why we want to incorporate rules and structure into our dog's lives.